G'day guys, and welcome back to episode 5 of our France campaign. Now, when I last left you, we had smashed both Spanish fleets, and basically pinned them in around their own calm home country. We're currently launching a naval invasion against Bilbao on northern Spain, and we have a current land invasion against southern Spain. So this war is going really well. We're blockading them, our fleets are way more powerful if you check politics. They have only got one light cruiser. They're building six ships, but one light cruiser. And their GDP is going down. So, safe to say, we've pretty well won this war already. Currently, we are building, if, you, if we check, a whole bunch of cru uh, heavy cruisers, a whole bunch of battleships we're repairing too. So, that's all well and good. And with that, I am going to end the turn. Alright, we're still building tension with the Germans, so that might end up being the next war we're a part of. E torpedoes. Plus three transport ships in the Bay of Biscay. And that's not good. I don't know how we lost three. <laughs> Considering there's only one ship. And it's currently pinned into a naval invasion, which we have a 50% chance of getting. Which we do have two more battleships we can move in. But first we'll move them down there to hunt down this light cruiser. Yeah, awesome. And then we'll move it further down here. We'll just try and get that percentage up. This should be going ahead fairly shortly. I don't think we have any other tonnage. I think this is literally our entire fleet. Right here, aside from... The small raiding force we have sitting off the uh, Philippines here. Alright, we'll have a quick look at research. Hull construction, one turn, boilers, economizer, cool. Uh, some explosives, naval communication, uh, that's just for the radio. Uh, there's nothing really interesting coming in there. If you look at what the next ship we're going to be designing, it's probably going to be the light cruiser. Uh, yeah, we could definitely do better than that. I don't think we have any new light cruiser hulls. Yeah, we don't. So maybe that's what this next research will be. We'll see. And with that, next turn. Alright. Should be raiding this. Alright, lost no transport ships that turn. Which is good. How's this war going? Still 50%. They obviously thought better of moving out to faces. I don't know how this isn't a meeting. <laughs> we have so many fleets just right in close to where they are. But I guess game logic says they're very, very sneaky. I'm assuming um, we did name the Admiral for Northern Spain, uh, the one that slipped through our fleets and ambushed our battleships. Looking at the Fox, which I loved. Uh, I can't remember what that is in Spanish, but I thought it was really cool, really clever. All right, and next turn. Sinking more transport ships. Ah, this is what we wanted. Is it fair? No. Do we care? No. <laughs> I might even end up just skipping this whole battle. Yeah, I'll probably skip this whole battle unless something really interesting occurs, which I doubt it. GG. And with that battle goes the last of the Spanish fleet and hopefully that dastardly admiral, the Fox. Still losing transport somehow, hopefully not anymore now that they, they should not even have a fleet. Yep, no fleet. <laughs> so that should make this very easy. Only 57% chance of this invasion to be carried off though. But if this doesn't work, we'll send a fleet all the way through to the Philippines, and we'll probably keep them there. 
I have them be one of our. I uh, must be commissioning. Yes. Uh, we should have plenty of. Yeah, so we can quit suspending that last uh, heavy cruiser. And we'll put it in. We'll put it in Brest. And then we'll try and get rid, uh, together a whole bunch of our older ships, older battleships, and we'll send them over to the. I didn't realize we had a uh, colony down there. And we'll send them up to. Uh, what do you call it? Haiphong? No. Uh, Fort Bayard. And please tell me we're building. No, we're not. Okay. <laughs> we're going to have to keep building our shipyards. Whatever. Expensive while we're at war, but we have the capital to maintain it. And with that, ending the turn. And if you did not see during the end turn sequence there, we have taken southern Spain. Which is a huge chunk of GDP for us. We see it is 804 million. Not quite what we have in the homeland here. But it's more than we get from northern Algeria. It's all going into our monthly naval budget. Now when does this kick off? In a few turns. Are we able to move this yet? Yep, we can move the Danton, and we will, along with the light cruisers in company with him. We're not doing anything raiding, so we might as well just use them to add tonnage to the fleet. And if anything's happening, we'll check next turn with cruiser design, we'll see if we're getting a new light cruiser. If we are, we won't stress. If we are, that'll be quite good. Mark 3 9-inch guns, that'll be good for the next heavy cruiser class we make. We just continue to smash the Spanish economy. Not really fair. God, how are they still in this war? I don't understand. I really just genuinely don't understand what is keeping them in this war. Just trying to see if we have any more tonnage we could send their way. We do. We'll just keep moving ships. Here, just try and see it we get that to climb as high as it can and look at that <laughs> their army logistics it's just terrible we might take the entirety of uh spain proper in this war and on that happy note next turn i'm sorry we're just kind of chunking through turns here guys but there's just not that much interesting happening and uh, not that much to really commentate i don't think we're going to take northern spain i just on a 66 percent chance in this game I basically assume if you don't have a 100% chance, you're not getting it. It just seems to be the way they do their math. I feel like 80, 90% chances fail quite often. So I'm not holding out hopes at all. Uh, but this invasion into Western Spain looks promising, and they don't seem to want to end the war anytime soon, so we'll just keep going. Next, I'll probably go to the Philippines instead of uh, Cuba, just because I know oil starts coming out of here, and you can see that now. Yeah, look at that. Alright, and next turn. And I didn't see blue. Now it's a heavy cruiser. Failed to get control. Yep. Called that. <laughs> Alright, what that does mean we can do is start sending our battleships home. So we'll I'll probably go off, we'll make a fleet right here in the Bay of Biscay with our older battleships, and then we'll send that one off to invade the Philippines. If this war continues that long, if not, they'll just stay in the Philippines. Alright, so this is... What's that older battleship class? Uh, the Justice. So that's who we want in this fleet. So Elena. Justice classes. Elena. And these are all the ones. Yeah, okay. I think this is our. Older cruisers too. Yeah, so I think 
what we'll probably do is we'll end up sending this fleet to the Philippines. And they can sit here in Fort Bayard. I'm probably going to be a little bit overweight for that, but it'll be fine. And then with that going down there, we can send this fleet back to Marseille. What are these ports like on the Spanish coast? Not great, but they're alright. And we can send these guys back to Brest with our other new battleships. And that will be that. This is going well. Ah, we're going through the Zuez Canal. Excellent. And we, uh, I did see, actually, before I end the turn, I did see the new cruiser design was a heavy cruiser. So we're probably not going to worry about that. We'll just go straight to our light cruiser design. <laughs> Alright, and that'll do it. It's not great, it's not very accurate, but it has a lot of guns. Uh, Mark II 5 inches, so they're not bad, it's got a ton of torpedoes, they're 18 inches, it's pretty quick, and it lays a ton of mines. So, I'm pretty happy with that. It'll be interesting to see how expensive it is compared to our old light cruisers. Yeah, it's only a little bit dearer. And comes with a lot more guns and should be at the same speed. Yeah, same hull, same speed, but I'm happy with that. That is the Arethusa class. Alright, now I don't think I'm going to build too many of these right now just because they have dockyards. Actually, our dockyards are a lot freer than I thought it would be. And we do have. I would like her to Alright, I'm going to start building. Eight of these gonna be expensive but it should be fun we're at war making a ton of money <laughs> I don't think all of these uh, ships will be in dock soon that'll save us a ton with that next turn and the war continues I guess Spain's just decided to fight to the death or bankruptcy <laughs> whichever gets them first I guess they're definitely competing to see which I don't know what's keeping them fighting. Honestly, I don't. I guess they're hoping these 18 ships they can build will just come out of nowhere, but you can just see they're not doing well uh, at all. And we are actually doing... Wow. Britain is not doing well in this war with Germany. Like, Germany's not doing well either. We've actually supplanted them as the most powerful navy on Earth, so... High five all us guys. <laughs> uh, we may be going to war with Germany soon. Which does make me question sending these old battleships all the way to the um, all the way to France, but uh, not France, sorry, all the way to uh, French Indochina. But it's fine. I think we'll be building new battleships shortly anyway. Hull strength, it, yeah. In 10 months, we're going to get a dreadnought hull. So, I think we all know what's going to happen then. <laughs> In fact, we might even accelerate. Three months. Yeah, just so we have something to do this episode, you know. And with that, next turn. Yeah, really happy I started building up our, our dockyards when I did then. If we're going to be getting dreadnoughts shortly. Because I feel like 25,000 tons should be okay for a small dreadnought, but... With the amount of money we have in shipbuilding capacity, we don't want to be building small dreadnoughts. It's just not how it works. I do feel bad for the poor um, Corbett classes, which have just come out, are meant to be state-of-the-art, and will probably be obsolete in three months. <laughs> but, I mean, that's realistic as well. That's genuinely what happened in history. Was nations put all these monies into these pre-dreadnoughts, and these semi-dreadnoughts, and then overnight... Dreadnought came out, I think, in 1911 and obsoleted everything. 
So, it just happens. There's not much you can do about it. Uh, we'll probably start refitting a lot of our old battleship designs very shortly. But the, uh, the Justice is fine, but the, uh, the heroine, heroine probably needs to be updated quite shortly. Aside from that, I'm going to be ending the turn. Happy days. Colonial contrast, uh, conquest of Sumatra. I'll take that. Ooh, where's Sumatra again? Oh, well, just so happens we have a fleet going there. Uh, the Admiral of this fleet, Commodore Luke Riley, will be having separate orders to go along with his main orders to fight the Spanish in French Indochina. He'll also be taking Sumatra, which is an oil producing nation. So uh, get all your America jokes out now. <laughs> ah, we should be taking this. Look at that lost disparity. That's terrible. <laughs> it's not terrible, but it's it's not great for them. Uh, you can see the light cruisers are starting to spread out their minefields now, which is fantastic. That's what they're designed to do. Our heavy cruisers are starting to build nice in time for us to get out our new battleships uh we'll leave that two months just to give some time for this to catch up Ooh. well i didn't really expect this <laughs> but guess he's going to war with germany ask us to sign a peace treaty i think historically we'd agree to this Simply for the fact that we're going to get a lot of Spanish territory anyway. And we've now got a much larger land force on the border. We can't have troops tied up in southern Spain. We're not Napoleon. <laughs> we're not going to have an entire army tied up fighting in Spain. While we're also trying to conquer Germany and Russia. Now I'm not making that mistake twice. One front wars. So I'm going to agree to this. Alright. We're going to fight this. With that, just torpedo boats, that's fine. Should be all good. Should be at peace next turn. No one's launched any invasions. Okay, army force is quite similar. Oh, why would they fight this war now? <laughs> they have no fleet. No fleet whatsoever. I wouldn't even know where they're based. They're currently fighting the Japanese, Great Britain, and us. Okay. So, bit of a paper tiger. I was actually starting to get worried there for a second. We might take a good chunk of Spain. Honestly, guys, this campaign has turned out to be... Not easy, but definitely quite a bit easier than I expected. I, I was prepared for a very hard-fought uh, campaign. But... Yeah, it, the difficulty is on hard, by the way. So I guess our next campaign is going to have to be legendary. Oh, we'll set a fleet off Helgeland. Many battleships as we can get. I think, are these the new Corbairs? No, we definitely want the Corbairs in. Let's want something old. Yeah, get them out. And we'll get out some heavy cruisers just uh oh jeez okay i guess we're getting torpedo boats <laughs> to make up the rest of the fleet can we get one more yep all right high and low <laughs> but at this point in time we have so many secondary tertiary batteries especially with the um the uh core bays and their fleet's primarily battleships anyway yeah, look at that. They're not getting close to us. So we're going to sit there and we're going to raid their commerce. And we've also got a fleet in reserve. Quite sizable fleet in reserve if they do break out. In fact, you might put that second fleet up here. Off the coast of Sweden. 
Just in case they get any funny ideas. If their fleet engages that, we might be in a bit of trouble. But I think we'll be fine. I'm not that scared of their battleships. Not with that many heavy cruisers. And with that, just making sure everything's good here. Yep. And with that, I do believe next turn is Dreadnoughts. The war continues. I guess Spain just has a death wish. I don't know how else to put it. <laughs> and that's Dreadnoughts. Alright guys, we're going to probably attempt to build those. Uh, the only thing that will stop us is if our shipyard's not big enough. Oh, look at that hull. I do like the experimental Dreadnought hull. But I'm going to have to go with Dreadnought 1. At least for the first one. Alright guys, I'm going to start building this. Richelieu. Oh, that's a fantastic name. Alright, I'm going to start building this ship and I will get back to you. Alright, and with that, we have the Richelieu class battleship with a broadside of six 13 inch guns, with another broadside of six 8 inch guns, a whole bunch of 2 inch casemates, and she's not quick, 19 knots at only 70%, 76% engine efficiency, but it's a tank. 5 inch deck armor, 14.2 inch main belt armor. The fore and aft belt isn't that great, fore and aft deck isn't that great, but we do have citadel armoring, and I think this thing's terrifying. <laughs> I wouldn't want to come up against this. We have stereoscopic range finding, so yeah, I'm very happy with this. This is the Richelieu class Dreadnought, and we'll be pumping these out as soon as possible. Uh, you do see these things are $30 million more expensive than the Corbet. <laughs> For 4,000 tons heavier, but that's fine. We can afford it. Alright, and with that, we will be building... Probably four of them. <laughs> Just because money's not really an object right now. And we'll also probably... The moment these old battleships get to um, Indochina, we'll probably be asked... Putting two or three into mothball. That's the way it's going to have to go. We have too many good battleships. We don't need the old ones anymore. <sighs> Look at that budget. <laughs> it is non-existent. But we're getting more of it. And it's just going to keep going up as we keep invading places. So with that, I'm going to end the turn. Oh, of course there's TNT. <laughs> Try to find peace. That Spain has been dissolved. Oh wow. Okay. So what, there's no Spain now. Everything's just. Well, that's a little bit annoying. So what, we do all that effort, and we get no peace deal. Yeah, right. That's uh rather frustrating. Doesn't seem very fair. Like, maybe I should have pushed harder for peace, I guess. We were worried about uh, Burundi becoming a drain on the neck of France trying to defend it, but we're actually going on the offensive in Africa, so I guess we didn't have worried. The, uh, it's the Germans that should be afraid. A bit disappointed we're not pushing into southern Germany, but I think that'll be fine. We'd have two battleships here off, uh, what is this, Jutland out here? I think we'll be trying to fight them. Be a good way to end the episode, I think. 
can get a battle with the two German battleships. It's not a fair fight, but I think that's the best we're going to get, really. Alright. And with that, I'll be ending the turn again. Alright, guys. Finally, a battle. And a chance to see the new core base in action. Alright. I'm pretty happy with this battle line. I don't think much need, I really needs to change here. We're heading to the southwest. Awesome. I'm actually really disappointed by the way the um, the war with Spain went. Like they just would not peace out, and at the end of the day, we, aside from the money we made from our war economy, we uh, we didn't get anything out of that war. Definitely not what I wanted. All right, we're going to be slowing down to cruising speed, which is. Nine knots. A bit quicker than that, but I think we'll be fine. See the core base in action. Oh, before I hit anything, let's have a look at these German battleships. They're not bad. There's a Mark II guns at the front with just like a Mark I turret. A midships? A little bit strange. Not even a wing turret, it's like a centerline turret. The bridge over the top. I guess it's based off something historical, but... A little bit odd. Yeah, we'll speed these guys up. I think they will be... swinging around behind these battleships. While our main gun line engages in the gunnery duel. He will not be engaging. The trident will be retreating. <laughs> if it can. Well, I guess that was better to say first blood goes to them, but actually goes to us. Oh my god, that was a 112 inch shell. Did all of that. I can't believe I missed that. Wow. Went straight through the deck, eh? Oh, no, it's 12 inch guns. I thought we were going to have to swing around with the uh, torpedo boats and finish them off that way, but I guess that won't be necessary. You see, our command radius is infinite, I guess. So I can't really see it. And we'll put HE on our secondaries. See if we can burn guys down again like we used to. Are these all of our. Yes. Our twin barrel torpedoes. Now, if you know anything about me. Oh. Flash eye is going to sink it. Yep. If you know anything about me, the lead ship in a torpedo boat class almost always sinks in its first battle I don't think there's been many times when that hasn't been the case so we're going to do our best but uh, I wouldn't have high hopes leave it at that this is such an unfair fight wow I would use that sinking ship as the thumbnail, but I feel like it'd be a bit of a spoiler to the this episode. But, uh, oh yeah, we're at war with the Germans again. <laughs> oh my god, what is the armor on these things? Made of paper, apparently. Because they're not stopping anything. Jesus. And these will be torps away, I imagine. Yep. It's torps in the water, and this will be GG. 
Oh, Torps didn't even get there. <laughs> the Germans... No. No, we're going to be mucking around with the Germans a bit longer. Although, I'll have to remember to um, push for peace if we beat them too hard, because apparently, if you don't push for peace, your enemy just dissolves, and you get nothing. <laughs> Literally nothing. So I guess China's going to gobble up all this eventually. Alright. Well, I guess we'll go through a few more turns, and then we'll probably end it fairly shortly. Not a long episode, but pretty action-packed. I'm going to move this fleet further off the coast of Germany, eastern Germany. I'd really like them to start trying to invade here. How are these invasions going? 16%, 8%, yeah. Germany's trying to invade Angola, okay. <laughs> Good luck. I think it'll be us the Germans and the Americans just fighting over the... Uh, sorry, not us. Us, the British and the Americans fighting over the world. We've got alternate World War One if we just kicked the living daylights out of the central powers before the war even started. Alright, what's coming down the research pipeline? Uh, new cruisers. These new light cruisers. Yeah, <laughs> always the way. Uh, new boilers. Special machinery. Is there anything... I would like naval communications to go up again. I might even prioritize that for a little bit because we just need bigger fleets. Our tonnage is getting too big. Right, and next turn. The war continues. Excellent. Uh, we would be in a lot of financial strife if, if, <laughs> if it ended just then in there. Um, battleships aren't cheap and we're building a lot of them. Another chance for unclinical conflicts. I'll take that. Sumatra and San Juan. Ooh, we are going to struggle to get ships over there. Uh, I guess we send our Mars safe fleet. And they're not really doing anything right now, so off they go. Alright, let's see what happens with this communications. Yes, that is what we wanted. And we're going to want that soon. Because I want bigger fleets. That's not really holding anything else back. Uh, Mark 3 10 inches would be nice. Alright, and with that, I think we'll be ending the turn again. Minehunter ships. Ships specialised in detecting enemy mines, escort fleet, and aid minesweepers. Oh yeah, I guess we don't have to build those, they're just passive. Oh no, the Germans don't like us. Sure. <laughs> We're just conquering everyone, apparently. Oh. Um, I don't know how long that lasts, but I guess we'll be taking that. What do we prefer, that or San Juan, Puerto Rico? 366, 551. Okay. New orders. <laughs> You're going for Cuba. It's also going to give us a better base if we ever need to fight the Amer uh, Americans. See if we can take that off. Three months. Yeah, that'll be fun. Well, I don't think we're going to get any more wars out of Germany anytime soon. Although they are running around with a cruiser. I'm not going to let them do that. <laughs> no. Just no. You didn't get to run around like that. Uh, fleet. How's their building projects going? Are we over? Oh. Uh, around fleet size. What are we building that's pushing us over? The Voltaire can be suspended. We're still over. Okay, well, the Voltaire can be suspended and the Nyad. It's replacing our previous Nyad. Ah, what do you know? Look at those building times. <laughs> Look at them drop. Still so long for the battleships, but that's fine. Ah, uh, these are just going to scatter through the world, as is my want with light cruisers. Let them to run free. That should probably help our budget, just a little bit, but that's fine. Soon we can start putting ships away. Hopefully before this next war with England, we can get uh, submarines. 
If submarines through the English Channel and the Irish Sea will just really stuff them up. Mostly just submarines of all of their major harbours would be so good. That's really my goal. And if submarines down here too, or like a fleet down here, we can keep them out of Gibraltar, and we can keep them bowled up in their ports with submarines and battleships, I ain't gonna tell you beat the British. They're gonna have a lot of fleets raiding around the world, which is gonna suck. There's not really much we can do about that. But we'll see if we go. Alright, with it, end turn. Alright, we have a meeting with the Saxony. I'm just gonna want to resolve this. Yeah. We didn't sink it, but I know how those battles go. You just chase it down for however long. <laughs> oh, France. We don't have any more ships. <laughs> like, we couldn't conquer them all if we wanted to. We just don't have the tonnage. We are fighting a major war against uh, Germany. Although we could probably pull one of these fleets off, really, at this point. Okay, I think we'll do that. We'll keep this guy in close, and we'll send this fleet out to Puerto Rico. Or whatever other thing, if something else comes available. Looks more interesting. Ah, disappointed we can't get Tangika. We are going to get the Congo Free State, and we will be doing no war crimes. I promise. <laughs> I promise no war crimes. Right. And with that, we will end turn it. Probably end on January 1900. Do I want this? No. Alright, so it's now January of 1900. Let's take stock of where we are. So, GDP wise, we are the. not quite the richest country in the world. We will be soon. We have the most GDP growth. We are don't have the most oil production. We're actually very low compared to other nations. Probably why we should take the Philippines soon. We have the largest navy by far with 100 ships compared to the next which is Britain with 73. We have crushed the Spanish so much that the Germans got terrified and declared war on us. Currently invading their provinces with our army we should be taking southern germany probably in the next episode we're also invading into the congo free state in africa that should be falling within a few months sumatra will be ours next turn in which case this fleet will continue forward to fort bayard our dockyards currently building 30,000 tons 120,000 shipping industry we have dreadnoughts 10 years before they were historically. We have dreadnoughts. We are taking Cuba and Puerto Rico to put our stamp on the Caribbean and threaten and bottle up America or the USA. Let's see, our last major rival in the world right now is England. In terms of wealth and power and fleet, like power projection, fleet power, it's Britain. That's all we have left in the world to challenge us. As for what's next, I'll kind of let you guys decide. Uh, do you want us to try and create Mare Nostrum? Like the French lake? <laughs> um, taking Italy and Austria and... I don't know, you can't really create Mare Nostrum because the chances of you getting invasions on all these little countries is pretty low. But we're also invading Morocco. I didn't even realise that. <laughs> Which is a very wealthy province, so we'll take that. Alright, and I know it's been a bit of a slow episode, guys. I feel like all I've really said is next turn. <laughs> but we had a few neat battles. The war with Germany started off with a very weak Germany. And with that, I'll have to love yous and leave yous. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I can't wait to see you next time. Ciao.